I've been engulfed in the grey of this world since I was a child. Until recently, I've never met someone who's as sensitive as me. It was enlightening and equally terrifying. So here's my story. I've been renting my house from a family member for several years now. Since day one, I knew it was haunted. I could feel the energy change the moment I stepped inside, but I could also tell it wasn't necessarily negative. I'm not a stranger to the paranormal, so when little things would happen like items moving or go missing, inaudible conversations in other rooms, or even my dog looking at an empty corner of the wall, I wouldn't usually react. I even nicknamed the ghost Bernadette and would jokingly ask her or it to stop. However, within the last six months, the activity has intensified. I've had individuals in my house who are complete sceptics, but they've witnessed glasses thrown across the room and shatter everywhere. Pictures falling from the wall, something or someone walking down the empty hallway, hearing it, and hearing people talking that weren't there. I even had to have my brother check that my gas alarm was still active because of the random areas in the house smelling like rotten eggs. Halloween night, I had a very small get-together, six people. One of my guests brought her wife, who I had only met one other time. While my friends were playing games and passing out candy, my friend's wife, we'll call her Emily, pulled me to the side, seemingly upset and stated she needed to discuss something with me. She first asked if I knew about Mary. I'm running names through my head that my co-worker had mentioned, and I've never heard of Mary. I obviously tell her no. And she proceeds to tell me a very detailed story about my house. She explains that I had three spirits in my house. A spirit named Mary, a spirit named Franklin, and that I had a spirit who's always with me named Gary, she thinks. She stated Mary had died in the house a long time ago. Franklin had died on the land before Mary from a ploughing accident and was still in his death state. She also confirmed my suspicions of extra activity. A few nights prior, in the middle of the night, I was in bed and jumped up from my sleep from a huge bang against my bedroom wall and a picture falling onto the end of the bed. Obviously, I was startled and especially spooked when I could see the indentation in my wall from what appeared to be something that had hit it. I jokingly said, not cool, Bernadette, and went back to bed. Emily knew about this. She knew he had hit my wall and said it was Franklin's way of trying to get my attention. Then when things are thrown in the house or fall off the wall, that is Franklin. Apparently, he's angry because I don't react. In my mind at this moment, I'm thinking, who the hell is this woman? I don't know her, and I haven't told her anything about my creepy house. I'm open with my experiences on here, but I'm very hush in person because of others' reactions. So I ask, how do you know this stuff? And her response still chills me to my bones because he's standing right behind you. First reaction is stuck behind me. Nothing. Second reaction is just why I can't see him. He doesn't want me to. Third reaction is why does he want to scare me? He wants attention. Since that night, the activity in my previously mildly creepy house has been off the charts. I don't get spooked easy. I've seen things that you see in horror movies but my house is scary. The energy has shifted. I feel like I'm constantly in fight or flight mode. I'm at work because I feel like someone is constantly looking over my shoulder. And I don't want whoever or whatever it is to read this. I sound crazy. It's just my dog and me in the house. And even he has been acting differently. I've caught him multiple times sitting in the hall looking at nothing, whimpering. And then he runs under the bed. I literally have to drag him out. When I'm changing clothes or taking a shower, I feel uncomfortable because I feel like someone is watching me. The house is nearly unbearable to live in at the moment and I've been at a loss of how to make it back go to my mildly spooky house. I've used my sage twice now and I think it just pisses Franklin off. With that being said, I have amazing friends and connections to the historical site in my town. With some research, I found Mary, and some other interesting details. Mary Frank, 48, died suddenly in my house on August 26th, 1998 from neuralgia. Her spouse, Charles Frank, held the funeral in my house. I haven't been able to find a Franklin yet. However, before the Franks occupied my house, it was a stable for horses. 
It could be a huge coincidence that Mary's last name is Frank. And maybe Emily didn't get a clear message. I'm honestly not sure. I've asked her since, and she still thinks his name is Franklin. She's even come back to my house and told him to stop. He won't listen. I do plan to keep researching the area for a man named Franklin, but I'm not sure there'll be any documentation. Another interesting thing is that I do or did know Gary, and he's actually been brought up before. Gary was my mother's best friend's husband, who passed away from a heart attack when I was young. At the time, we lived on 20 plus acres of land, and he loved to go hunting on our property. When he passed, it was his wish to have his ashes spread on our land. I was told many years ago that Gary watched over me. I know the activity in my house is increasing. I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe because I'm more aware now, but I don't feel in danger. I never have because I know Gary is there, now from multiple sources. This happened about 20 years ago. I was a preteen and my grandma wanted us to spend more time with her at her house. My grandpa had died a few years earlier and my parents decided that me and my brother would stay there for the weekend. The home was old. My grandparents, grandparents had built it. So I think it was at least 150 years old, but with renovations. It stayed in the family and we always loved to play in the garden. It was a huge home for that time with three floors and a balcony. But there was this one big room upstairs that didn't feel the same. We're not religious and spirits, energy or anything paranormal didn't play a part in our lives. But we never wanted to play in that room. We never spoke about it, never mentioned it to each other. My brother and I would just stay out of it. In it, there was a fireplace, single bed and a huge oak closet. My grandma kept her yarn in the closet and she sometimes asked me to get some. I would run into the room grab it and run away. So when she told us we had to sleep in that room, we both didn't want to. We asked her if we could sleep in my mom's old room. We even wanted to stay up all night. But she told us that I could sleep in the bed and my brother would have a mattress on the floor. We did not sleep, both of us. The only thing I can remember is laying in that bed, perfectly still, not moving, even holding my breath. When I peeked down, I saw my brother do the same. I smelled all these crazy spices throughout the night, things I had never smelled before and even heard what I thought was a guitar. The next morning, we jumped out of bed and ran out of the room. We didn't tell my grandma or my parents. My mom got really upset with me when I didn't want to pick a ball of yarn for my grandma. Never would I go into that room. My grandma is getting older now and her memory is fading. I heard my mom talking about the room with her and the people that had lived in there. I asked, and she told me that the room was always rented to travellers or other folk that worked in the area. That's why it had its own fireplace and closet. I casually said the room always felt a bit odd, like it wasn't part of the house. My mom confirmed she felt the same, and after the last tenant left, they never used it. I mentioned it to my brother, and he got really upset. He never wanted to think again of that night, how we smelled different perfumes and how the room felt very dense. Like it was full of people, smells and things. Again, we never spoke of this before or to each other. I don't see my grandma that often and only in family settings, but I still get the creeps thinking about that room. If I ever get the chance, I want to go up there, see and feel that room again. Maybe it was just me being a kid, but I've never felt anything like that before. Two years ago, I was driving down the road, just going to the grocery store to get some Lunchables. I was sitting at this stoplight, waiting for it to turn green, when all of a sudden, I felt incredibly warm. It wasn't just an instant reaction, no. I felt the top of my head get very hot, and the feeling slowly trickled down all the way to my feet. It was almost like the feeling of having a fever, but my entire body felt it. And not in an instant manner but in a weird sort of coating feeling that gradually consumed my whole body. And in that same instant, after the heat had settled in, 
my body got extremely cold, to the point that my arms had goosebumps from how cold I felt. It wasn't a good feeling. The first thought I had was death. Clearly, I've never died before, but when I do, I feel like that would be how it feels. All in all, it just didn't sit well with me. Something told me to call my mom and check on her, my stepdad. So I called my mom and thankfully she answered. I asked her if everyone was okay and she goes, uh, yeah, why, what's wrong? I told her what I had felt and she told me that that was strange and not to worry because everyone was okay and at home. The next day, I was at work and my mom called me. She told me my stepfather's dad, my stepgrandfather died. And when I asked when he had passed, she told me that it happened the day before and that's why she had called me. Because he died only minutes after I had called her. They just didn't receive the news until that morning. Has this happened to anyone else or something similar? I have no doubt in my mind that there was some kind of sixth sense factor involved. There's more to this world than we know, even within our own minds. My current girlfriend used to work at a cafe slash bakery in an old building in Bordeaux. She used to close at night alone because she was the store manager and stayed after the crew was done to count the register, do all the paperwork, etc. The bakery was made of the storefront, the kitchen in the back and the office in the back as well. There's also a second floor, which is only storage and the changing rooms for the staff. The building isn't shared, it was only the cafe slash bakery. She told me she felt uneasy as soon as her first shift there. Most nights, she'd hear footsteps upstairs, the TVs in the sitting area for the customers turning on and off randomly, and the front door's doorbell ringing while the door wasn't moving. All that when she was alone. Another co-worker she was close with shared the same experiences with her. I believed her because she has a history of paranormal encounters and is very serious about that stuff, but I wasn't convinced until I witnessed it. I also work in the food industry, so I was rarely off when she was working too. One Sunday, I was off, so I decided to come pick her up and spend the last 30 to 45 minutes of her workday she usually spends alone with her this time. She gave me a tour of the place and it did feel uneasy, but nothing significant happened except for some rattling noises upstairs, until I mentioned how quiet her ghost of the bakery was. She was counting the register in the office, in the back of the store. I was leaning against the wall in the corridor leading to the office, my back turning away from the storefront. To my right, there was the dishwashing room. There was no door to this room, just an opening in the corridor. To better visualise, I was facing towards the office watching my girlfriend, turning my back to the storefront, leaning against the wall but seeing the dishwashing room in my peripheral vision. Jokingly, I tell her, I'm glad your ghost decided to leave us alone tonight. Not one second after I finish my sentence, the pile of glasses and dishes in the dishwashing room goes flying. I saw the whole room clearly in my side vision and there was no one or nothing that could have done that. There was a pile of glasses stacked up in a pyramid and they flew as if someone ran their hand through the base. It wasn't one glass tipping and bringing down the pyramid, it was legit pushed off. She just told me, I told you he's always there, since she's used to stuff like this happening. She was almost done, so we stayed less than 10 minutes there, but I could feel a different level of oppression and uneasiness for the whole time. This one sticks with me because there's no rational explanation. I saw the dishes go flying around and it was a direct response to my joke. I have other experiences that could be explained. I'd be happy to post them if you want to find an explanation or lack of with me. Driving through a ghost on a pitch black forest road, seeing a school kid ghost sitting on my bed at night, and cats behaving weirdly. The first week we moved into our house, I had a dream. It was an odd dream, as it was a black and grey checkered orb that seemed to pulse and seemed to be sucking in the blackness that it floated in. My wife woke me up in the middle of this dream as I was screaming while I was asleep. This was something that has never happened to me before and hasn't since. 
I know that this was a dream, but it's one that I cannot shake. Combining this with other strange things that have happened in this house, I'm starting to believe that this is no dream, but something else. What other strange things do you ask? One night, I was coming home from the store. I stuck my key into the door, but realised I had the wrong key. I'm about to take the key when I feel the lock turn on the other side and hear the click of the door being unlocked. I turn the handle and the door opens, but no one is there. I asked my wife who was watching TV in the living room if she unlocked the door for me, and she said no and asked why. I didn't say anything because I know the paranormal weirds her out. One night, while watching TV by myself, our dog started at nothing and started to growl. I noticed the hairs on the back of his neck started to stand up, and he went from laying down to a crouched position to lunging at nothing. This was the first time I really felt like something was going on in the house. There have been several people, myself included, who have had the feeling like someone is rubbing your back. We've heard footsteps down the hallway. There have been several instances where I've been taking a nice hot shower, and suddenly the air in the shower gets cold. The water is still hot, but I'm freezing because of the air in the shower stall. Another odd thing with the shower is I can go to bed and when I get up in the morning, the shower is doing a constant drip, like someone took a shower and didn't turn the knob all the way off. One day, I took a shower while my family was out. When I got out, I heard my wife say, hello? Thinking they got back earlier, I replied that I was in the bathroom. I dried myself off and got dressed. When I came out of the bathroom, there was no one home. I called her and confirmed that she was still out shopping. There have been many occasions where I felt like someone was watching me. The other night, I was laying in bed, having a hard time sleeping because I had that feeling someone was watching me again. Suddenly, I heard a sigh inches from my ear. A few days later, I was walking down the hall. As I'm walking past the guest room, I see a hand reaching out in the corner of my eye, reaching out and touching my hand. Not only did it scare the crap out of me, my wife was in the kitchen and our daughter was over at a friend's house, but it felt as if someone had shocked me and my hand was numb for about 10 minutes after. Last night, for several hours off and on, the wife and I heard what sounded like someone dragging furniture across the hardwood floors about our house. When we would check, nothing was moved. When I was in my early 20s, my father was diagnosed with cancer. I do not recall which one specifically, as by the time the cancer was found, it was all over his body. He continued to live his life as best as he could, but over time, his health began to decline. It took copious amounts of pain medication just for him to get through the day, and he was beginning to barely eat or drink. It was around this time that he began to wake up in the middle of the night to apparitions at the foot of his bed. He would explain later that he was being visited by my late uncles, telling him that he should come with them. I'm a firm believer in the paranormal, so when I heard that this was happening, I figured his time on this earth was coming to an end. Still, this was something I was having a hard time coping with, as I simply couldn't comprehend that my father was dying. At this time, his doctor was stating that the chemotherapy and medications were helping, and that there was a chance he could beat his cancer. But I believe my father knew a lot more than he let on. Although there may have been hope he was in an extreme amount of pain, and he probably sensed his time was running short. The evening before he died, he asked for an extra dose of his pain medication, which should have tipped my family off that he was in worse shape than he let us know. All seemed well when we all went to bed that night. Unbeknownst to me, my mother moved to the living room couch in the middle of the night, which was a fairly common occurrence as my father was a terrible snorer. Around 4am that evening, she went to check on my father, and his body felt cold. In a state of panic, she ran to wake me up, since I was the eldest and my siblings probably couldn't handle the situation as well as I could. I quickly called 911 and gave instructions to my mother that were given to me by the dispatcher on the phone. As my mother desperately proceeded to give him CPR, I just so happened to see something in the corner of my eye. 
I glanced in that direction to see what was there and could not believe my eyes. Standing in the far corner of the bedroom was my father. He stood there watching us with his hands clasped behind his back, which is how he stood when he was thinking or waiting for something or someone. He was staring straight at me and there was a transparency to him, like I could see right through him. I looked back down to his body to make sure I was actually seeing the sight before my eyes, shocked at what I had seen. I glanced back up and he was still there, smiling a mischievous smile at me, like this was a secret between us. His presence was incredibly comforting. This particular experience seemed like a confirmation that he was going to a better place, as well as proof of the existence that there is something after death. At this point, my attention was broken as the paramedics had arrived and were knocking at the front door. When I looked back, his apparition was gone. Everything afterwards was the experience of anyone who has had to deal with a death in the family. Police asking the details of what happened. My family and I comforting each other. Overall, just trying to cope with what had happened. Later that morning, other family members began to come by the house, giving their condolences and offering help in any way that they could. At this point, I was exhausted, so I decided it was time to try to get more sleep. As I lay in my bed trying to comfort myself, occasionally wiping away the tears from my grief, I felt my father's comforting presence once again. Although I was unable to see him this time, I did feel his hands lightly grasp mine. I feel it was his way of letting me know that he was okay, as well as a way of saying his final goodbye. In 2008, my father passed away, and after my father passed, my family fell on hard times. My mother would worry about financial matters constantly. One night, she had a dream that my father came to her telling her not to worry, the help would be on the way soon. Sure enough, the next day, my mother received her first check from Social Security, ensuring a semblance of financial security for her. She would have these dreams whenever she fell on hard times. It seemed to be a thing where if she was worried about something, he would visit her and let her know that everything will be alright. This went on for quite a while, until my mother finally passed in April of last year. This is where things get even more interesting. Shortly after she died, my wife and I were able to purchase a house. One where my mother was supposed to move in with us. Or at least that was the intention. Shortly after moving in, I began to hear what I thought was her voice, but oddly enough, this was only when I had headphones on, either playing games or listening to music. I chucked that up to pure coincidence, but then the smell of her perfume would permeate the air. All this activity seemed to be building to something incredible. In August of last year, things appeared to have calmed down. That was, until I had this dream. In this dream, I awoke to my mother sitting in my bed looking over me, like she would when I was sick as a child. I remember telling her that I missed her so much and that I wished I could be with her. She hushed me as if she didn't have a whole lot of time. She handed me two gifts, telling me that she brought these special for me. As I began to unwrap the first one, she started to fade, and that's when I woke up in total hysterics. It all felt so real, and nothing could convince me otherwise. I believe I cried for hours until I finally fell asleep. Here's where the financial thing comes back into play. When I awoke that morning, I went outside to smoke my first cigarette of the day and get my mail. I wasn't shocked to find a check for a thousand dollars in the mailbox, which I'm sure you could say is gift number one. I've still yet to figure out what gift number two is, but I'm sure it's coming. Thank you, mom. So I'm 17 years old, and my parents moved into my house when my mum was pregnant with me. This house is over 100 years old and used to be an orchard. My mum gets a strong sense of unease in one dark corner of the garden. She always has, and we don't know why. Just after I was born, my mum discovered that baby clothes were disappearing from the washing line for unexplainable reasons. One day, she went to that corner of the garden 
and ask whatever it was to stop stealing clothes and said that she's happy to share the garden. The clothes stopped disappearing. I must admit, I always felt uncomfortable in that shady corner of the garden. Fast forward about 16 years and over the UK lockdown, we decided to build a tiki bar in the garden in that dark corner to cover it up. Ever since then, some things have happened. I was playing guitar in the bar one day and suddenly I heard these loud footsteps pacing on the roof of the bar. They were too heavy to be a bird. They sounded human. When we were working on the bar, my dad was working on the roof and I was in the bar. So I know what human footsteps sound like on the bar. I put my guitar down and ran out of the bar to see that there was nothing on the roof. Bear in mind, that corner has always felt unsettling, but nothing has happened like this. It left me shaking and I told my parents. Fast forward a few months and we were all chilling in the bar one night. And we were talking about the footsteps and this knock came from the wall outside. We laughed it off to brighten the mood and it was killed with a loud bang that came from the roof. It sounded like someone punching it. This freaked us out. Fast forward to the most recent event that happened the night before Halloween. We had two guests over and they sat in this corner seat below a shelf with a heavy bongo drum on it. The bongo literally slid off the shelf and hit one of the guests in the head. There was no breeze because all doors and windows were sealed. And even if there was a breeze, the bongos are really heavy, so it wouldn't cause them to slide off the shelf. The bongos are always pushed way back to the wall, so they're always far from the edge of the shelf. My sister her entire life has been able to see the dead and communicate with them. She says that for people like her that can see them, they're like a beacon of light to spirits, so they all flock to her. Growing up, she was constantly bombarded with, by spirits telling her to tell my son I'm okay, or pass on some message to loved ones, or simply be basically harassed by them. Apparently, many of them kind of just meander around in a confused state, almost unaware of what's going on around them. She finally found a way to kind of control her power, where she can almost shut it off when she needs to, but she can never completely block it out. She got to the point where she wanted to start using her abilities to help people. She's an amazing tarot card reader, practices wicker, and has drawn spirits out of numerous homes. I worked at a gas station that was severely haunted. Lots of people had experiences there, including customers and employees. We all worked our shifts by ourselves there and would all experience the same things. Whistling like someone is working, seeing a shadow man, things being moved, cigars thrown at you, etc. We ended up naming him Sam. One of my co-workers was literally chased out of the building by Sam one night. She heard the footsteps rushing after her and she ran right out the door and didn't even turn back to lock the building up because it chased her all the way out. She had to call our manager to go there to lock up for her because she's never going back there again. Random customers would bring up seeing a shadow person down an aisle. Once I had a little fat girl around five years old ask me if I believed in ghosts when she was paying for her candy. I told her, no, that's silly. Just because I didn't want to scare her. She told me, well, I just saw a ghost back there and pointed to the back coolers. It finally got to the point where the gas station owner wanted to do something about it. I told him all about my sister and how she could probably help him. He gave her permission to come in after clothes and get the spirit out of there. The next day, my sister came in after I locked the place up for the night. My mom came as well to watch. She slowly walked around the store. It wasn't long before she stopped in her tracks and gasped. She stood there for a while and cried a few tears. She described to me what she saw. She said that he presented himself as a man about in his 30s and was wearing old work overalls. His arm was barely hanging there from his shoulder and was mangled. She compared it to what it's like when you twist and twist the stem of an apple and it's barely hanging on. She said there was lots of blood. He apparently had died in a farming accident on some farm that used to be near the property many years ago. He was confused and didn't really know he was dead. 
My sister smudged the entire place with sage and did some kind of weird ritual-like stuff. I wasn't exactly sure what she was doing. She then set a mirror up on the wall that was straight across from the front door. She said that doing this will help show him the way out. Some time went by and then she said that he was left and had finally moved on. It was a strange feeling all of a sudden, almost like you were completely surrounded by peace. Ever since this happened, nothing paranormal has happened at that gas station. My sister has been able to see and communicate with the dead ever since she can remember. She practices Wicca, is a gifted tarot card reader, and started helping people rid their homes of spirits after she decided to start using her abilities to help others, including a gas station that I used to work at. My dad has always been a skeptic and truly believed my sister had a mental disorder, causing her to have hallucinations. That is, up until the day his truck he came home to an unwanted spirit. One evening, my dad was working late, well after dark. When he finally got home, he came into the house with a disturbed look on his face. He was quiet and went into the other room to talk to my mom. I could overhear him telling her that on his way home, he got a creepy feeling that someone was sitting right next to him in his truck. He said that all of a sudden, his airbag light turned on for the front passenger seats. That light only turns on if somebody is sitting in the seat because it detects if there's weight on the seat. He told himself that it was probably some electrical issue until he could actually see the outline of a dark figure sitting there out of the corner of his eyes. Whenever he'd look over, it would be gone. He sped home as fast as he could so he could get out of the truck. He didn't know what to think about it other than it scared the crap out of him. My mom witnessed my sister ride a ghost out of the gas station I worked out of, so she suggested that my sister take a look at what's in his truck. At this point, I was in the other room with them asking him more questions about his experience. I'm not gifted like my sister is, but I am sensitive to spirits and have always taken interest in the paranormal. I even conducted my own investigations with some friends in the past. My sister came into the room and we got her to speed with what's going on. She said that she would go check out his truck and ask me to come with her. What I experienced next still gives me the chills to this day. We went outside to his truck and my sister climbed into the driver's seat. She was silent and looked over to the passenger seat. She said, it's still in here. She turned the truck on and the passenger airbag light turned on again like it did for our dad. I need to quickly note that this was in the dead of winter in Minnesota. So it was crazy cold out and we could see our breath as we exhaled. She turned to the passenger seat and blew out a breath of air. I witnessed her breath flow forward and then float around what had to have been a solid figure in the seat. But nothing was visible there. Chills. She turned to me and said that we need to get it out of there ASAP for dad's safety. We went back into the house and she explained to our dad what it was. She said this type of spirit is known as a hitchhiker. She said they're generally malevolent spirits that, just like a hitchhiker, jump into random cars driving down the road. She said that these can be dangerous though, because then do, do things like make your brakes go out in your car so that you'll crash, or do other things with your vehicle to ensure that you get injured or even die. After hearing this, as skeptical as my dad normally is, he gave her permission to do what she needed to do to get it out of his truck. She turned to me and told me that she needs me because she needs an assistant for what she's about to do. She gathered some items from her room and we went outside. She performed some sort of a ritual outside of his truck and had me join her. I cannot remember all the details of this ritual because it was completely new to me and this was years ago. I believe it involved a feather and knife that she harnesses for energy through, a jar with some sort of charmed leather bag with unknown items in it and symbols painted on it and various other tools. After performing the ritual, she smudged the inside of his truck with sage. She turned the truck on and the airbag light was still on, like someone was still sitting there. Then she whipped open all of the doors and shouted at it to leave because it was not wanted and was never invited. She told me that it didn't want to leave and that it was being stubborn. After some time of her shouting at it and doing something else with her tools in his truck, 
She took a deep breath and told me that it finally left. Sure enough, the airbag light turned off in the truck. We went inside and she told my dad that she was able to get it to leave. Ever since this happened, his airbag light never turned on by itself again and he never saw or felt some unknown being sitting in his truck again. To this day, my dad doesn't like to talk about it. But all I know is that he's now a believer and no longer thinks my sister has a mental disorder. When I was around 10 years old, I went with my dad to his farm. I spent vacation there as a child and I don't have very good memory of my childhood. I hated school. Everything was so bad that I erased almost everything from my mind. But that day is printed like a video of 24 hours. I got there at night and as soon as we got there, my mom called and I knew it was because I got some bad grades and almost failed at school. My dad was talking to her then he told me to go close the main door. As soon as I got there, I saw a humanoid figure, totally translucent, only its borders were visible. And behind it, six floating light balls alternating between blue and red. It was very tall, but not distorted, exactly humanoid, perfect proportions. I could see everything through it. The dogs of the farm were surrounding it and barking at it and making angry noises. I was a very scared child, but that thing didn't scare me instantly. I got curious instead, then I asked, who are you? And it gave me a step ahead. I immediately started crying and ran back inside, calling my dad, saying there was someone in there. He turned off the phone and without hesitation, went to a wardrobe and took a shotgun hidden between some clothes. When we got outside, it had vanished, but the dogs were still barking and surrounding a certain place in front of the house way further this time, but there was nothing there. It's a plain space with our house in the middle, nothing surrounding. After 30 seconds, the dog stopped and came back inside, like nothing had happened. And my dad said I was seeing an optical illusion of the lights of the bus that brought students that arrived around that time. I still have no clue what it was. Never had any similar thing happen after, but I remember that day perfectly. It's going to be 10 years from this time around next month. So yeah, I'm at almost double the age. I was almost 11 and now I'm almost 21. For context, I'm currently 22 years old and it happened back in the December of 2008 or January of 2009. I was 10. I live in Estonia which is in the northern part of Europe. This is important since during the heart of winter, we only have about four hours of daylight and it's fairly dark from around 3 p.m. until like 11 a.m. So this story takes place in a resort roughly 80 kilometers east from the capital Tallinn, where I had gone on a trip with my school class. Everyone was super excited since it was our first trip where we also spent the night. A rather popular thing to do back in that day was to make these makeshift Ouija boards on the paper and use a ring on a string above it that would swing lightly, pointing towards certain letters or numbers or answers. Nobody took it seriously, and mostly it was considered this kind of prank that older kids played on the younger ones. So obviously, as kids, we didn't think twice before doing it. Roughly ten of us gathered around, made the makeshift board, and the ring on a string thing, and mostly just goofed around with it. Asking very cliche and dumb questions like, did you die in this house? Are you going to haunt us tonight? If yes, reveal yourself somehow, etc. But nothing happened throughout these few sessions as far as I remember. Perhaps some more sensitive kids got creeped out by it and left and the others accused the one holding the ring on a string of pointing to certain things on purpose. But well, who knows what really happened? That's not what the story is about. So it had to be about 8 or 9 p.m and teachers were encouraging us to go to bed, since some of our classmates had gotten caught imitating smoking by rolling a tube out of a newspaper and lighting it on fire and smoking it. It was already pitch black darkness outside. I shared my room with another guy from my class. Let's call him Mike. The layout of the room was two beds parallel to each other, with one metre gap. One was closer to the corridor door, where I was sleeping, and the other was closer to the opposite wall, 
that was almost entirely covered by the glass balcony door and huge window where Mike was sleeping. So we were both sitting on the edges of our beds with the big light turned on, getting undressed and ready to get in our beds. Mike was sitting facing my bed and the corridor door and I was sitting facing his bed and the huge window slash balcony door. So I stood up to take off my shirt and I saw it behind the glass balcony door. At first, my brain did not quite register what it was, since the light was on in the room and I thought it was just my reflection or something, until it moved a couple of steps to the left and I started turning around, while I was standing in place and Mike was sitting on the bed. I completely froze for what felt like an eternity and holy Jesus fucking Christ, to this day, it's still the scariest moment of my life. It was a light golden slash light peach colour, human sized thing. As soon as my brain registered, this is not your reflection, I made some gasp like sound and flung myself to the bed and covered my head in the pillow without saying a word. I must have gone completely pale since Mike started asking me, Harold, Harold, what is it? What's there? Me with my head still in the pillow asked, is it still there? He asked, is what still there? I'm not looking before you tell me what's there. So little by little, I turned my head up towards the window side of the wall, convincing myself in my head that I'm just seeing shit, and that it's not real and I have to look again. Boy was I wrong. When I turned my head back, I immediately turned it back inside the pillow, cold shivers running through my entire body. What I saw was the same light slash golden light peach coloured shape, standing behind the glass door. It had no distinguishable neck or arms or legs but it roughly resembles a human silhouette with two black eyes. I kept my head in the pillow for what felt like an eternity, but most likely it was just a couple minutes. When I turned my head back next time, it was gone, and we went on with our evening by talking about random shit as kids do, until I fell asleep. To this day, I do not know what it was or might have been, but had the idea of posting it now, since my friend sent me a huge collection of true scary experiences, and I felt like sharing mine. Thursday last week, me, my boyfriend and his family went to scatter the ashes of his grandparents. It was very emotional. It was a stormy night and we were all huddled on the harbour wall where they had so many memories over the years. It sounds unreal. Waves were crashing around us either side, wind howled, if it hadn't been our last chance, I would have said hell no. Friday night, me and my boyfriend get home. We sat on the bed and grabbed the bag with all of our holiday purchases. As I opened it though, I noticed the small bag that contained a small amount of the ashes. I asked him if he wanted to see it. He did. He placed it on top of a box shelf that was, has a few other spooky bits with it. Not that his grandparents are spooky, just that's where he put them. Anyway, all good vibes. We looked at our stuff, ate some chocolate, and went to sleep. Well, at least we thought we did. I'm a light sleeper. The kind of person who has to wake up to turn over. I laid there for a while, awake but eyes closed. Suddenly, I got the feeling something was watching me. I opened my eyes to prove there was nothing there, but I was wrong. I have awful eyesight and the room was dark, but I saw something. A hooded figure, a woman I think standing by the shelf where the ashes were sitting. I closed my eyes as quickly as I could and held my breath. I thought I'd fallen asleep. I thought I was dreaming. I started hearing a voice whispering and then found myself in a weird space. Total darkness. I couldn't feel my body anymore. It was like I had suddenly fallen into deep sleep. I looked around this dark room and saw two figures standing there, but I couldn't quite make them out. The whispering voice was taunting me because I couldn't quite work out their faces. They kept changing and the voice was saying, you don't even remember what they look like. Eventually, I realised it was my boyfriend's grandparents standing there staring at me. Suddenly, my great grandma was there too. All of them looking at me like I wasn't supposed to be there. And then I started to feel my body again and I had one eye slightly open. I could see what was happening but I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't hear my heart. I could have sworn I was dead or dying. It was so scary, but I couldn't do anything or ask for help. 
I could feel my boyfriend stroking my arm, but I couldn't do anything. All I wanted to do was scream. I don't know what happened or how it happened, but I came around. I rolled onto my back and laid there for a second before my boyfriend, who was sobbing, asked me if I was okay. I told him I think I just died. And he, a fully grown man, jumped out of bed and turned the light on, in a total panic, saying, No, stop, I feel weird. I feel weird. This feels weird. I thought that was it. I thought I'd died and just broken the illusion that I was supposed to hold up. You know the idea that the universe only exists because you do? That thought filled my brain and I couldn't do anything. I wanted to cry so badly, but I couldn't find the energy. Right before he turned the light on, I saw the hooded woman again. He went straight through her. We slept with the light on since last night. It was the first night we turned it off and still had the landing light on. Anyway, we spoke about it the next morning. He also saw the woman, but she was poised ready to get him. He said he felt like she was strangling him. He thought I'd died too and was genuinely heartbroken, using all of his energy to bring me back. I couldn't believe it. It was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me and I feel so emotionally numb towards it all. I've been on edge since. Every bump or creak makes me jump. There's a painting of a face in our dining room that's made me scream because I forgot it was there. Today, I just found out that the exact point where we spread the ashes, two people died last night. It made my stomach turn. Like somehow the thing that was there with us on Friday night was a part of the death of those people. It's shaken me to my core. I just needed to tell someone this story because it's eating me inside. Okay, so I'm going for a night out to have dinner with my fiancé at a restaurant in a big mall close to home, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We're in the car, chatting and making our way there. There's a parking structure at this mall, and to get there you have to pass by the main street entrance, on a thin, one-lane path. I have a habit of always being quite vigilant, looking around and notice everything I can. I mean, those who come to Rio de Janeiro or live here know that it isn't the safest city in the world. So as I slowly drive by the main entrance's big double glass automatic doors, I look at everyone standing there. Typically, they're waiting for an Uber or taxi to pick them up. In the corner of the square space, almost touching the left wall just outside the door, I see a woman, or what looked like a female human. But what made me look twice and then a third time was that she had no face. She looked like one of those store mannequins. Now you could argue that she was a mannequin, Except that lady was moving around. That blew my mind. About five seconds after we pass by those doors, my fiancé looks at me with shock on her face and asks me if I had just seen that faceless lady. I mean, it's one thing for me to have supposedly seen it alone, and maybe I was just seeing things as they say, but she had seen it too. We got in and parked the car, and we went outside to see this thing, but she was gone. Till this day, every time we go to that mall... We look for that faceless woman, but we've never seen her again. It wasn't creepy per se, but definitely some glitch in the matrix type stuff. This all happened in Germany, somewhere around 2009 or 10. It's a thing that pretty much terrified me as it happened. It was directly targeted at me, but sadly, I'm still unaware of what it really was. A pretty long time I had to ride my old scooter to the train station every morning. It was a pretty long journey for a vehicle that was only able to drive 30 kilometers an hour and led me through a, most of the time, pitch black forest with a castle on top of it. I don't know if it actually has anything to do with the scenario that unfolded one morning. I was on my way through the forest as a lone car appeared in my rear window. I thought nothing of it, as the car directly positioned itself behind me and started flashing its lights. At first I was confused, but then I became more and more terrified. The road was free, and we were the only two on the road. At first I thought he tried to warn me, so I slowed down. I tried to see the car, but was totally blinded by its high beam, which went on and off viciously. I was totally blind, all of my mirrors were completely white. 
I became more and more terrified. Was he going to rob me or something? I drove to the right and stopped my scooter as the car engine behind me started howling as I saw him overtaking me in the mirror. As I turned around on my scooter, I only saw a dark forest which went completely silent. The lights and all were gone. There was no way for him to have drove off. I stopped the engine to hear something, but everything was silent. Afterwards, on the way home, another strange thing happened. On my way home, I had to cross a very long bridge. On the way, I noticed a few cars coming my way. A red VW, a black Toyota, and a silver Ford. I clearly saw them in the mirror overtaking me. But outside the mirror, only the VW and the Ford drove past me. It was completely random that I noticed it. The black Toyota was gone. Did you guys experience similar things? I'm not too sure about it, but some people claim that especially the Autobahn is a place where you can encounter many things that are not that normal. It's a few years back, but I want to share the experience I made with you. First, I'm not a grave robber nor a pervert, but I was a construction worker back then. We had to replace an old connector water pipe from a great church in our city with a new one. Around the church there was a green lawn which, as we were about to learn, was used as a graveyard for the richer citizens from 1100 up to 1800. The thing is, the ground there is very clayey, which brings the dissolving of a human skeleton to a hold. This, mixed with the old grave digging habits from the people back then, led to our excavator digging out lots and lots of human bones as soon as it got deeper than one meter. It was pretty awkward as our construction team was just standing there staring while the excavator unearthed whole skeletons and then cut them in half because in real life the bones aren't still connected like they are in cartoons and such. I, as the trainee back then, got the job to pick the bones from the earth pile the excavator created while my three co-workers just stood there refusing to touch anything. I stood there wearing gloves, taking up bones in a complete skull, brushing them more or less clean and collecting them on a piece of cardboard until the archaeologists showed up on the site. They took photos, told us some facts of when the place was a graveyard before taking off again. After the work was done, we threw everything back in before the holes got filled up. The paranormal about this was that as soon as I started working at the bones, I felt like being watched, not only by my colleagues, but also by the dead. Not necessarily the ones I was holding in my hands though. At some point, I was even able to see them, but only from the corner of my eyes. I've been around paranormal things since forever. I saw two people standing right next to the hole, watching as I did my thing, but they disappeared as soon as I turned my head. At first, they seemed to be upset. Gestures, I didn't hear them. But as they noticed I was very care and respectful with the remnants, they just stood there watching me. After that they disappeared, but I saw them again. They reappeared in the same style on the always free back seats of our car as we headed back to the department. I was the only one seeing them, but my co-workers were a little bit creeped out by the fact that I had touched human bones without hesitating. The phenomenon stopped after I prayed for these souls later on. It was a fun job, but not the only weird experience. Many years ago, like 20, there was an entity playing peekaboo around the corner with me on an almost daily basis. I was around 10 years old at the time. They went like this. I was sitting in the kitchen doing homework all alone. At the other side of the room was the always open door leading into the corridor, which ended into a T-shaped corridor. At this corner, a black shadow started appearing and watched me around the corner. If I looked at it, it pulled back. If I looked at my paperwork, it peeked out. At first I thought it was a creepy illusion, but as I tried to ignore it and excessively stared at my books, it came out more and more, until it was clearly visible in the corner of my vision. I looked, it went back around the corner, but for a split second I clearly saw it. I couldn't believe my eyes and tried again, placing the book right in front of my eyes. In the corner of my eyes I could see it again. The shadow began growing bigger and bigger, even blocking out the sunlight from the window behind it. Suddenly, 
the energy in the room changed. It didn't feel like a game anymore, but more like I'm in serious trouble. I got up, the shadow hid in the opposite corner of the tea. While running away, I threw my book down the hallway and left the house until my mom got back home. But it wasn't done yet. It reoccurs every single day I was home alone for a few weeks, which happened pretty often. Most of the time it felt harmless until it decided that peekaboo was boring and it needed to step up the game like going up the stairs. That was just at its favourite corner while making extra audible slow footsteps. I started telling my mother. If the entity started making noise and stalked me, I ran away. But when I called her, the house went dead silent. We went searching and of course, nobody was there. The moment my escort left the house, it came back. My mom more or less believed me because my reaction was not like I was making fun of her, but I was in real terror at that time. But what could she do? I've had several face-to-face -face encounters with this thing over the years, and it was sometimes even worse than this with it directly, I think, coming after me while making loud trampling noises as I ran. It suddenly stopped after we smoked the whole floor with incense, which sadly took us a long time to figure out. These happenings were very creepy and somewhat exhausting. It's pretty far back, but still, after all these years, not the worst, but definitely one of the worst experiences I had with paranormal entities. So, just for context, I'm not yet a believer in the supernatural. I always loved science. I'm doing a bachelor's degree in science and technology and graduating in aerospace engineering. But some things are happening and I'm putting the pieces together about certain events that happened in my life and I'm a little bit worried. So about the events that happened to me before and I never thought about it in the supernatural way. When I was little, I lived in a two floor house. It was a huge and cold house, even in the summer here in Brazil. I loved that house and I loved my infancy, even with the traumas that I went through. My dad, on the other hand, hated that house. I tried to keep the story short, but some context is needed. In 2013, my dad was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia and passed away in 2014. Now we think there's some crazy shit he said and done when he lived in that house. And when I was a child, it was caused by his disease, not diagnosed at that time. He was a normal guy, very, very lovable, kind, and most everyone in my city knew him by name, as he worked in one of the three banks in my city. I live in a small city, about 50,000 people. But he began to act strange. He would freak out some nights, saying that he hated the house, that there were demons on the first floor. All the bedrooms were on the second floor. My mom never told me that until I was like 18. She's always been super protective. I remember that one time he had a panic attack, saying that he heard someone call him a motherfucker right next to his ear. And that day, he began to act crazy, without context. He ran on a treadmill for like an hour. He was not an athletic kind of guy. And we had to call his cousin to talk to him. That day, he was sedated and we know that something was going on inside his brain. There was a lot of similar stuff that he did. I'll tell you another time. But I always thought he was just crazy because of the FTD diagnosis. And every time something hard to explain happened to me, I always find the most parismonious explanation. One time late at night, I was thinking about my old house. My dad was still alive, and we had recently moved on to my current house, side by side my old house, and heard someone walking in the attic. The only way you can get to the attic here is breaking the roof, or getting a ladder and opening a locked metal door outside the house. The steps were right above my bedroom, that night, I was scared. I was like 14 at the time and tried to wake up my dad. He was depressed back then under strong medication and did not wake up. My mom said it was fine and it must be a cat or something and told I could sleep with my father and she was going to sleep in my room. When I was almost sleeping, I began to hear scratching noises in the wall beside me. I was scared and prayed and it stopped. There were other strange things that happened to me. But what brings me here is to ask you guys for advice. It's something that happened yesterday. Last week, me and my girlfriend watched the A24 movie Hereditary 
and I loved it. She always believed in the supernatural, and after we watched the movie, I always joked about spirits and demons to scare her. Not super scary, just so we both laugh. Last Monday, she was sleeping over and woke up to go to the bathroom. I said to her as a joke, be careful with Paimon, you may be taking a dump. And she was a little nervous. She said she didn't care about me talking about spirits. But the Goetia theme always freaked her out. And she got goosebumps for hearing the name of one of her Goetia demons. Then, because the stupid guy I am, I yelled at the house. I challenged Paymon to fuck up my life. I bet he can't do it. She got angry and said that she never felt the same way walking around my house with the lights off after that. Yesterday she was sleeping over. She works at home. And after she finished the job with her notebook, I was almost sleeping. And she went to take a glass of water to get some sleep with me. I was in that stage between dream and reality and woke up scared. Hearing someone running from the kitchen to my bedroom, heavy steps. It was her, and she was super scared, almost crying. She said at the moment she turned on the light of the kitchen, she saw a very tall shadow standing beside the kitchen table, next to the sink. She couldn't scream and just ran back to the bedroom. I walked her again to the kitchen to show her it was only her imagination, and that everything was fine. But after that, I can't stop remembering my dad's crazy stuff, and can't escape the feeling that someone is with me every time. Anyway, I know I was disrespectful with her beliefs joking about Paimon, but can this feeling be just a reflection about certain coincidences that shook my notion of reality a bit? Or do you guys think that this kind of thing really exist? And I doomed myself asking for a king of hell to fuck up with my life.